I've said this a few times, I think, on the channel, uh, and I don't like talking about this, but this is really the core of me and my philosophy when it comes to life and existence and, and, and making choices in life. Um, I reluctantly talk about this because it is a very heavy topic and it's something that a lot of people don't want to hear. And it's unfortunate because that's what life is. I think about death every day. That is a very heavy, very, very heavy thing to say. I appreciate that. And for people that don't ever think about death, it, it can be very confronting and uh, very uncomfortable to listen to. I've been exposed to a lot of death, suffering, you know, through my job. Uh, and also I've lost some loved ones in my life. There is nothing like a thought of death. It is the ultimate clarity cascade of thoughts for me. Uh, we all have our self-talk, I hope at least. We all talk to ourselves before we go to the barbell to lift, you know, whatever set, maximum effort. We all have this chatter, I guess. Maybe some people don't talk at all. But I often think about these type of things and often process life through some of these thoughts. And when you're experienced, when you experience death, suffering on a regular basis and you see other people go through this, these hardships, I don't know about you guys, but I always leave the situation. I might not be overwhelmed in that moment, but I always leave the situation. I always try to make sense of what I just went through. Uh, and all of these thoughts end up coming full 360 and it always ends with me thinking about my own existence and my own demise, eventual demise, and my own life and death. Uh, when I go to my loved one, my loved one's uh, grave cemetery, I think about when I'm going to, when my time is up, and then I reverse engineer my whole life and I think about what am I here for? What am I doing? It is very difficult to isolate your own thoughts in this chaotic world that, you know, full of information. The information age, everyone is telling you something. Everywhere you look, there's an advert. They want you to do this. They want you to buy this. They're, they're offering you this. Full on. In previous ages, if you just think back 50 years, 60, 70 years, if, you, if I think about how my grandparents grew up, she probably grew up on a paddock looking after some cows, walking them back, taking care of them, working on the, on the, on the, on the land. She had a lot of time by herself, to herself, to think and process her thoughts, to mature her understanding of what is happening. You contrast that to what our experience is. How many hours on the phone do you spend? Non-stop information, talk, stimulus. So for me, working out in the garage with nobody around or maybe one person around, a best friend, the cameraman, and just having some soul food conversations, doing something that I absolutely love to do. It is literally like pouring fuel into my reservoir and topping me up. This is one of the reasons I do not like going to some of these places, public places, gyms, all of that. You know, why don't they freaking play some inspirational shit rather than some pill popper crap Heavy metal, skulls caving in, knuckles bleeding, war music. Obviously, most people don't want to listen to Aristotle's, Socrates, Plato's, Ralph Waldo Emerson's quotes, 
essays. They don't want to listen to these, these ideas. Churchill's quotes. To me, when I hear about some of this heavy stuff, like life and death, everyone's time is going to be up. I'm reading right now as I'm, as I'm talking to you guys. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is then not an act, but a habit. This is one of the first quotes that really grabbed my attention, really motivated me more than any song that I've ever listened to, more than any beat that I've ever listened to. And I might be completely different to all of you guys. But to me, nothing motivates me more. Nothing gets me into the wrong mindset as somebody speaking some pure wisdom. Occasionally, you will hear a song with some nice wisdom, with a very nice beat to it. But those are very rare. I'm a fan of hip hop. Occasionally, you, 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 you listen to hip hop music and it's some nice wise stuff talking about good stuff most of the time that their music is all about money power cars girls getting back at somebody that kind of stuff it's toxic i've thought about this for a very long time why do i like hip-hop music i like it because of the beat i like the beat i don't particularly like what they're saying I just feel like I keep going back to the same idea. If I ever open up a gym in my life, if I ever am fortunate enough to ever be blessed to do that, I feel like I'm going to just like have people like through the speakers talk some sense. Motivation. To me, like I said at the opening of this video, when I see suffering, death, Nothing gets me focused in life like that. And I don't know whether you need focus before a lift or not, or what you need. But when somebody says to me, there will be a date in the future when we all pass away. We don't know when, but it's all coming for all of us. There's one thing that's for certain, we're all going to die. There's nothing more powerful to me as a 32 year old man, then listening to somebody say that, thinking about those thoughts, putting somebody in a body bag at work and thinking about what, th what that person did in their life. And then thinking about what, what I'm going to do in my life. What am I doing in my life? Weighing my decisions. Am I spending this time, this currency, the ultimate currency, time? Am I spending it efficiently? And in this world that we're living in, there are so many damn distractions. There is a million and one things that you could get distracted by. But when somebody says to me, time is ticking, man. Time is ticking. How are you spending your currency? There is a date booked in for you. And I think most of us want to do, want to do the things that we want to do. There are all of us, I think, deep down in our souls, whether we realize it or not, I've realized mine, well, all of us have goals, ambitions that we want to achieve. But why, why do some chase it like mad men and women and some are just stagnant and frozen stationary? Why is somebody squatting every day, thinking about it all the time, making mistakes, plateauing all the time and still banging his head against the wall and still thinking about it and still enthused? still dreaming. Why does somebody do all of that and another person does nothing? There needs to be a degree of courage. You need to fail. You need to understand that the only way you learn, the only way you achieve is through failure. You learn more when you fail. You practically learn very little, if, if anything, when you win. Because when you win, things have clicked. You know the recipe, it's over, it's done. Close the book, sell it. Tell somebody else, this is the recipe, everyone make the recipe, enjoy the damn food. But when you are in the act of making this recipe and you're making blunders and blunders, you're like, okay, so this is not recipe, this is not recipe, I need to change this, I need to change this, I need to change the temperature of this, a bit more of that. 
I think most of us, most of, most of us going through this life are just afraid of failure, afraid of ridicule. Ha ha ha, this guy's been squatting for 800 days and he's still shit. Ha ha ha, you play basketball for 20 years, you never made it to the NBA. Ha, oh, uh, how long have you been working here? You should know this. One of my favorite freaking things that people say. And I remember being a junior nurse in emergency and listening to seniors say that. How long have you been nursing? You should know that. I feel like frog splashing them from the top damn ropes. I feel like choke slamming them off the damn cage. That's what I feel like doing when I hear that sort of stuff. When people put other people down and get a kick out of it. Man, I love me some bullies, man. I want to I maul a bully. My favorite thing in life is to identify a bully and square my shoulders to that bully and be like, oh, you want to go? My favorite thing. You have to learn how to uplift everyone around you. It is not about putting people down. It is about uplifting the people around you, uplifting the community around you, being a, a vehicle of positivity, not negativity. How long have you been working around? You should know the answer to this. Like you're the freaking Aristotle of medicine. Like you are somebody that's, you got a cape around you. We should throw some damn roses on the ground when you walk because you know everything. Freaking Einstein doesn't know everything. And this person is telling another individual, how long have you worked here? You should know this. What the hell do you know, man? These negative people that I rub shoulders, not frequently, infrequently, but I sometimes see them. They are scared. They are, they are vulnerable. And they feed off of other organisms for energy and approval. The people who stick their necks out and say, I don't know the answer to this damn question. I'm willing to upload videos for 800 days in a row and... and, and and embarrass myself in front of the world, in front of my own family and friends, in the act of working this shit out and making sense of something. I'm willing to be laughed at for years to come because Ivan George doesn't know what the hell he's doing with periodization, doesn't know anything about strength, biomechanics, biology, chemistry. He's got no idea about anything. I'm willing to stick my neck out and be laughed at because that very act is the very act you need to do to learn and progress. These people who are tucked in to their little cozy beds on their little keyboard saying, ha, 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 they don't have the courage to walk out themselves and take the damn hit. They don't have the courage to stand in the front line and own it. Bullies are insecure people. Bullies don't have courage. They are like parasites feeding on other organisms for energy. They cannot create it themselves through failure. It is far easier to step on somebody else's shoulder to get ahead than to maybe learn how to climb and work it out yourself. Work, out, work the problem out some, some different way. And when I think about death and I think about courage and I think about failure, it is like a laser beam focus. I know exactly what I need to do. I don't have time. I don't have worries about being criticized, negatively, ridiculed. If you're listening to this and you have a burning desire within you, which I'm sure you have, you might not be crazy about squatting like I am. We all have something. We're all put onto this earth to enjoy life in this very, very temporary thing we call life. Time is running out. Don't waste it because you are scared of sticking your neck out and making a fool of yourself. Every single day, wake up and just say to yourself, I'm going to chase what I love to do regardless of people laugh or not. That is what success is made of. The moment I realized, I've never, I haven't told you guys about this, but I'll say it now. I thought about starting a YouTube channel for a very long time and I've been a consumer of YouTube content for a very long time and I never thought I had it in me to speak 
on a video like this freely because I was embarrassed. I didn't like the, 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 the sound of my voice. I was embarrassed that people would say, you're a dumber, you don't know anything, you don't know how to squat, stop talking, drink some milk. I was afraid of those type of interactions with people. And then I lost a loved one suddenly. And I went to that loved one's funeral. And I went, I got no time to waste here. I got no time. I need to get on with it. That experience motivated me. That experience gave me the energy, the courage to make the first video. Before uploading that first video, I had 50 heart attacks and 50 strokes and 50 freaking illnesses. I was very, very nervous when I clicked that publish button. I took a chance. I embarrassed myself. Internally, I was very embarrassed about mostly people that knew me listening to the, these videos. Um, and here I am now. Very glad that I stuck my neck out. I've had a couple of hiccups, people paying me out, people teasing me and all this sort of stuff. But when I saw death from a family member and you guys know where I work, it hit me 50 times more harder because it was my own. When I saw that, when I saw death like that, it was just, I don't care no more. I need to live this life because it's flying by. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.